world, our voice, Young Tamils. Good evening everyone and welcome to Our World, Our Voice, Young Tamils. First of all, a very happy Taikunga to all of you on behalf of our Maybelline team. So on this auspicious day, that's part of our culture and part of our identity, we are joined by the students of Maybelline Drama School. Maybelline Drama School is a place in which we are able to learn our traditional Tamil drama forms, lots and lots of different drama techniques, and it's also a place where students are able to express their personality and become confident people full of character and charisma. Maybelline has put forward this platform to our following generations so that we can put forward our voice and discuss and express our opinions on what our identity is and who we are. So today we are joined by the students of Maybelline who are here to have a debate on whether or not it's possible to live in the UK with our Tamil identity. So we have one team who are for this idea and one team who are against this idea. We're also joined by our judge Yashas who is here to listen to our debaters and come to a conclusion on which team has the strongest arguments and which team wins this debate. So let's see how it goes. Handing over to Yasha. Hi there, I'm Yasha Spaludi, and today I'm going to be acting as the judge. And this fits perfectly, as I know absolutely nothing about this topic, which makes me perfect, as I have no biases and it's just going to be judging. So today we're going to be arguing or debating as such around the question is Tamil identity practically possible to live with in a country full? of British identified people. So to this debate, we're going to have two sides, one arguing that we can and one arguing that we can't. And I'm going to be looking for confidence, clarity in speech and creativity and your take on the question. So I'd like to say good luck to everybody. Thank you, Yashas. And so our first speaker today is Sahitya, who is arguing her point for why it is possible to live with Tamil identity in the UK. Hi, I'm Sahitya and I'm here to talk about Tamil identity and how it's possible to live in a country full of British identified people. Firstly, I would like to say that January is a special month as it marks a new year. Tamil people are celebrating various types of festivals every year such as Daipongal, Diwali and Temple festivals. Daipongal is being celebrated by all Tamil people around the world. Even the London Parliament has allowed us to celebrate this occasion with members of their community. This shows us that they respect our Tamil identity. Therefore, it just proves that it's possible to live with Tamil identity in a country full of British identified people. Secondly, I would like to mention our language. As we all know, Tamil is the oldest language on the planet. Not only do Tamil people learn their language, but other communities are intrigued by it and its history and learn our language too. We know this because people on social media post videos of themselves or others speaking or singing in Tamil. The University of Cambridge has accepted Tamil to be taken as a GCSE or an A-level. Also, UCAS points will be awarded for taking Tamil. Tamil people also marry British people. Both of these points go to show that you can live with Tamil identity among British identified people. Finally, I want to talk about how musical instruments are involved in Tamil culture. At least one member per family plays an instrument. Whenever we perform in programmes, we like to invite special guests, such as the mayor and other members of the community. Whenever they give us feedback about the performances, it always motivates us. And once again, it proves to show that you can live with Tamil identity among British identified people. In conclusion, I strongly believe that you can live with Tamil identity in a country full of British identified people. Thank you. OK, so I'd like to start off with a really positive note, saying that your signposting was brilliant. The way that you said first point, second point, and we, you were able to conclude and link back to the point that you made at the very start was really good. But I would say you looking at your notes wasn't very good. I, I didn't like it because I didn't feel like it was coming from your heart and you weren't saying it genuinely. 
although the speech was very good, the content was good, and your points were good. So well done. Thank you, Yeshas, for your comments. And so our next speaker is Alan, who is speaking on behalf of the team that think that it's not practically possible to live with Tamil identity in the UK. Hi, I'm Alan, and I'd like to start off with what Tamil identity includes. It can be everything and anything. The food we eat, such as idli, rice, dosa, and whatnot. The cultural, traditional clothes we wear, such as the verdi. The festivals we celebrate, Mahavira Day, Diwali, Pongal, and so much more. There are all these things, but still many Tamil people want to fit into the British society, slowly becoming distant from their ethnicity. It is not, therefore, practically possible for us Tamils to show our identity and live with it amongst the other British identified people. Firstly, many people, especially children, are trying to be more like the British, merely because they live in Britain or because of their friends. The environment also has a huge impact on them. For example, many kids prefer Nando's, KFC, McDonald's and other fast food restaurants to something such as Saravana Bhavan, which serves traditional cultural Tamil food. Another thing is, we do not wear our cultural saris or vertis to public places, do we? Why don't we? It's because today we are scared of being different from others. We are scared of being the centre of attention. Do you ever see someone out on the streets wearing a sari? No. Now, think about the Sikhs and the Muslims wearing their turbans and hijabs. Oh, Ali, I'd like yes. to ask you a question. So you were saying that you, um, they're not comfortable wearing their cultural clothes or they might be scared. Are you saying that all Tamil people are? Because I know for a fact in other cultures, people aren't. Um, I'm saying from my experience that um, I've seen outside, apart from parties, I've seen that outside loads of Tamil people do not wear saris, they just wear something such as jeans, shirts, anything like that. Now, think about the Sikhs and the Muslims and how they wear their turbans and hijabs. Why is that? It's because they have brought up the respect and dignity to their culture and religion. It is, too, it is not too late for us to do the same thing, but no one is willing to go out into the streets and wear a sari and verti just to kickstart everyone else. So this is why men, uh, this is why it is practically not possible for us Tamil people to live in the British society. Another point is the pronunciation of the word Tamil. Now, proper Tamil identified people would pronounce it as Tamil, but fully whitewashed Tamils would say Tamil, T-A-M-I-L, not T-H-A-M-I-Z-H. I often hear my Tamil friends going out and when people ask what language they speak, they go, oh, I speak Tamil. I very rarely hear someone go Tamil. Why you ask? It is because they will think that the British will not understand when they say Tamil. And so they say it in their way, in their language, in their pronunciation, Tamil, just to satisfy them. One thing that had happened to someone I knew is that they walked by a school, not a Tamil school, but a government one. And they had this massive board on the front and had all these different languages saying hello, welcome, guten morgen. And it did have Tamil, but it was not grammatically correct. The spelling was wrong and the word on the board did not really mean anything. So they went into the school and told um, the receptionist there that the board had an error on it. The headmaster came and he said that, um, he said thank you and said that errors will be corrected in the future. The next week they went past the same school and the board still had not been corrected. They went into the school again and the headmaster said they were having font issues. And so they typed it out for them and the headmaster said thank you yet again and he mentioned that there are um, loads of Tamil kids studying at the school and about 20 Tamil parents would pass this board every day but not, not one single person had managed to correct the error on their board. So if we do not have the courage and bravery to say to a simple school that there's an error in our language, how are we meant to have the courage to go out in public 
all different from other people wearing a sari or a dhoti. We can't. It is not possible. Now, I'm not saying that I don't think Tamil identity and ethnicity is important. I do. I really do. I'm merely stating that given the current situation and the character of the Tamil community, I do not think that this is possible. To conclude, I believe that these are the reasons that living with Tamil identity is not possible in a society surrounded with British identified people. Thank you. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was really, really good. I loved your speech and the fact that you took it from a different perspective, talking about the way you pronounce Tamil. And also, I liked how you included this story. But one thing I felt wasn't right was when you were grouping Tamil as one. I know the majority don't do certain things, but obviously there are certain individuals that don't. So if you had made that clear, it could have improved your speech a lot more. But other than that, we really good. Thank you, Yashas, and thank you, Alan, for your speech. So moving on to our third speaker, Shinmeya, who is on behalf of the team that thinks it is possible to live in the UK with Tamil identity. Of course, Tamil identity is practically possible, as that is our heritage and our ethnicity. And in such a multicultural country, we have all the possibilities to live with our identity. Although we live in England and may have a British citizenship, we cannot call ourselves English. This results to a loss in our identity and dignity. So therefore, we will live a life without knowing the true meaning of identity. In this country, we have all the facilities and freedom to express our culture. British people are accepting towards other people's cultures and traditions. By living with our Tamil identity, we can educate British people about our culture. This can result to a better understanding of our tradition and concepts such as racism can decrease as these are a result of misunderstanding and assumptions made towards people whose identities are different. Because we live in a country filled with um, English identified people, it is e easy to forget our ancestors because we are exposed to Western people and their cultures. However, it is important that we remember our Tamil identity as we are the second generation growing up in a foreign country. And if we forget our true identity, then our next generation will also forget and they'll think that well, they are from and belong to this country. So you say that we shouldn't forget our Tamil identity and so, so on. But would you say that we should have a mixture of both British and Tamil identity? Or should, whenever someone asks you, completely say your Tamil? Well, I think um, we are, but uh, yeah, I think we should say that we're Tamil because um, we are Tamil. So we have to say who we are, don't we? Although we're born here, that's where we're actually from and that's who we are. So I think that we should say, if someone asks who we are, I think we should say that we're Tamil. Um, so besides, if we ourselves don't know our true identity, then we can't teach the following generations who we are. So. If we, if we can't teach them, then they will forget and there could possibly be a stage where Tamil identity doesn't exist. In a country like the one we are living in, uh, we have all the possibility to live with our identity. Many people um, attend Tamil schools weekly, where they learn about our mother tongue, culture, history and our lifestyle back in our homeland. We also celebrate traditional festivals such as Taipongal, Sitra Dersam and Adi Prabhu. Through these acts, we are openly living with our Tamil identity. Finally, we may be living in England, but however many generations pass, they will not become English and our identity will always remain Tamil. Thank you. Okay, just, just before you finish off, I've got a quick, a quick question. So you say mm -hmm. that um, we'll, you'll always remain Tamil. When, this might be a hard question, but you say that we should, we should learn about homeland, cultural stuff, then why is it that you're living here in England? Why not move back? That, to... That's because um, our parents moved here because of um, things that were happening in our country, like the war that was happening in our country. So they want to survive, that's why they came to this country. So now uh, the education here is better as well, so, so that's why we're still living in this country. So that's why we're here. So would you not say it's unfair that the British here are teaching Tamil kids 
good education, so, giving them good stuff, and then you're saying that you're Tamil and you're not related to the British. So, but isn't this like a multicultural country? So, like, um, if you ask other people who are from different countries as well, wouldn't they say where they're from? Would like it's more likely that they'll say that they're from that country instead of saying they're from England. So, yeah. Okay, so I just want to start off by saying some of the questions I asked might have been a bit irrelevant, but I, I wanted to know the answer, and you you provided me with a good answer, and you were very confident while doing so. But I will say you were very strong with your point, which can be good at some times, but I think you need a bit more variation. However, I did feel as if your speech was very confident and you had good factual information. So, well done. Thank you. Thank you, Yashas. Moving on to our fourth speaker, Dan, who is talking on behalf of the team that think it's not practically possible to live with Tamil identity in the UK. Hello, my name is Darren, and I'm here to talk about why we cannot live with Tamil identity in the UK. We cannot live with Tamil identity in the UK. I strongly agree with this statement because following your native identity in the Western world could be quite challenging. Learning Tamil is good, but only being able to speak Tamil in the UK is hard. If someone scores 98% in their Tamil exams, but does not do well in school with other subjects, they won't be able to progress and establish themselves in their careers. And they might not be able to go to good universities without good grades. For a non-English speaker in the UK, everyday life will become trickier and trickier due to the language barrier. You may need, even need a translator to go to the hospital or local government offices. Some of parents in the UK that may not be able to speak English can struggle when taking their children to parents' evening due to the language barrier between the teacher and the parent. Many people in the UK do two languages as their secondary education. This is usually English and in other European languages. Tamil is a language which is not spoken by a vast percentage of people, and although it may be the first language on earth, but it is not recognised by the UK as much as other European languages. For example, when someone applies for a job that requires someone to speak more than one language, someone that speaks English and French, Spanish, Italian or German, for example, it's a higher chance to be selected for the job than someone that speaks just English and Tamil. Uh, I've got a question. Yep. So you say that um, during an interview, if you know Tamil and English, that gives you a lower chance of receiving the job than someone who knows another European language. And I think you're getting at the point that Tamil might not be as important as the other languages. And that's not, and that's only because maybe the job opportunities are more in European countries. So it's more likely that you're going to need such as languages such as French. So what would you like to say about that? Um, yeah, but the main, because um, some European language, um, European countries colonize other countries. So um, it makes sense why they'd speak that language over there but for um but tamil is spoken all over the world as well and it's the first language on earth so if it's such an ancient and beautiful language that many people don't really respect sometimes and some tamil children in the uk might not be able to speak tamil but, but they could speak english and spanish for example because they learn those languages at school. Tamil is not an easy language to learn for, to start. It does have two, 247 letters. Tamil is a huge language in terms of content compared to Spanish, for example. 
Many Tamil people in the UK have a Tamil accent when speaking English. If a child had a Tamil accent when speaking English and went to school, they could be bullied because they have an accent that is not the same as other people's. There is a person I know who was in reception. That person was born in London. And she spoke Tamil uh, amazingly. Okay, so you yep. said that they could be bullied for having a Tamil accent. Wouldn't that apply to every other culture in the entire world, if they were living in more the or less, More or less, yeah, because if you have an accent that's not spoken by many people, you could be judged, or an accent that some people might find different, and then some people might be bullied because they think that it might be a unique accent, and then they might not like the slang that they're speaking, and so they might decide to bully the student. And one day, a person injured themselves at school, but they couldn't explain to the teacher what had happened due to the language barrier. That person then had to call their old, older sibling, who was in the same school. And, that, and, that, and their sibling had to act as a translator and translate what he was saying. This shows that in the Western world, it is almost impossible to follow Tamil culture only. To conclude, I strongly believe that Tamil is important, but it is hard to live with only Tamil identity in the UK. Because some people don't want to stand out and be different. For example, when British Tamils go to work, they will not be able to follow Tamil culture whilst in a working environment. This is because it is not common for someone to wear Tamil cultural clothes, as you will have to follow the certain rules and guidelines that were given to you. For example, if you go to a professional work setting, you might be expected to wear a certain uniform or formal clothing, and your cultural clothing might not be formal or or with specific uniform to that company's eyes. Thank you. Darren, that was really good because I really like the way that you paused and your steady pace intrigued me further but despite saying that i did feel as if a little bit more pace could be used and i liked your confidence while speaking you took your time and you were very sure of what you were saying however when you were answering my question i did feel as if you, if, as if you tried to dodge the question and i wasn't sure whether you actually knew the answer or not but other than that, I really liked your story as well. But other than that, it was really good. Thank you. Thank you, Darren, and thank you, Yashas. So up next, we have Brindavan, who is our speaker on behalf of the team that think it is practical and is possible to live in the UK with common identity. Hi, my name is Brindavan Sri Bhaskaran. And I'm here to tell you that you can live with Th Tamil identity in the UK. Firstly, I'm Tamil and my past generation is Tamil and my future, future generation will be Tamil as well. This won't be changing. The only thing that will be changing is our citizenship. Now, this is proven because if a Tamil person gets hurt or something, the first word that comes out of their mouth is Amma because Tamil is their mother tongue and that mother tongue is running in their blood. Secondly, we live in a country where people speak English. English is just used for communications. So this is not our identity. Identity is our culture, our mother tongue, and our religious events. In the UK, I have the right to celebrate religious events. For example, we can celebrate Thai Pongal, uh, celebrate Diwali, and even do weddings in our religious ways for example the government doesn't uh, have any rules that we need to pray to this god and we build our own temple and pray to our own god also they haven't got any rule that we need to speak english we decide not to speak in, not we decide to speak in english why do i have to lose my identity when i have the freedom to live with my identity thirdly tamil is the oldest language and the history of Tamil is very interesting. 
and it also has a lot of books like Tirukkura. In Sri Lanka, so many soldiers died believing that the future generations will learn and live with the Tamil as their identity, wherever you live. Do you want to lose your identity as a Tamil and make all those lives and deaths pointless? Finally, it is not that a person changes their ways and live with their identity, it's just that they choose not to live as Tamil. And so we can live as Tamil and you should be proud to be a Tamilan. Thank you. I, I really like that. It had good structure. Throughout the speech, I was following along with whatever you said, and it just felt as if I could relate to what you were saying. Also, I really liked your introduction. So, yeah, I don't think there's many points to work on. That was a really well prepared speech. Well Thank you. We're now on to our final speaker, Vaishali, who is speaking here today to say that why she thinks it's not possible to live with Tamil identity in the UK. Hi, my name is Vaishali Fakiradhan and I'm going to be speaking about why we cannot live with Tamil identity in England. I agree with this sentence for many reasons, such as the language barrier, the cultural differences and the fact that it is hard to wear the Tamil cultural clothes in this country. Of course, there are many more reasons why we can't live with the Tamil identity, but these are the main few. First of all, it has been proven that over 59 million people in England speak English as a first language and fluently but there are only approximately 200,000 Tamil speakers in England. In order for us to complete day-to-day -day activities such as working, shopping, and just communicating in general, it's better for us to use English as the people surrounded us is English and can only speak English fluently. Also, for our generation, English is our first language and Tamil is our second language. So it's much more convenient to speak the language that we are most confident in and can speak fluently, which is English. To begin with, England is known as Sorry to break your flow, but um, you said that you were talking about languages and you should use English over Tamil. But if even if you do use English over Tamil, would that be getting would that get rid of your Tamil identity, or is that just another way of communicating? Because it's easier to communicate with England English, then it's like it's more easier to just use English and use English for all purposes because if you don't use Tamil that much then why why should it even be in our daily tasks and activities so the fact that we use English so much is a reason to not even use Tamil because it's difficult for us to begin with, England is known to have rainy weathers and cold conditions throughout the entire year. As our traditional clothing is a sari or a verti, it's inappropriate to wear these pieces of clothing as we will be very cold and uncomfortable. Another reason why it's difficult to wear our traditional pieces of clothing is because of our work and school dress codes. For school, we are required to wear a uniform and for work, we are required to wear a suit and tie or a smart dress and a blazer. Also, one of our most recognized Tamil holidays is Thaipongal. Thai Pongal occurs on the 14th of January and this year it actually occurs on a Thursday. In Sri Lanka and India, there's a designated holiday for Thai Pongal to be celebrated. Children and adults will get a day off from work and school in order to celebrate this festival. This is how much they care about this festival. But in England, especially because Thai Pongal is on a weekday, we will change it and move it to a weekend or a day that we are free according to our schedules and calendars. For example, if we are not free because of a tuition or because our parents are at work, we will move it to a Saturday or a Sunday when we are free. This proves that we don't need to live with Tamil identity, let alone can't live with Tamil identity. Another reason why we can't live with Tamil identity is because of the food. The Tamil food that we cook and eat can take up to two hours to prepare, compared to English food which can take up to 30 minutes or less. If we are coming home from a long day of school or work and we are very tired, it's very inconvenient to cook a meal that we must prepare for two hours beforehand. With the different side dishes we must with the different side dishes we must make, such as rice with curries, it is easier to cook fish and chips that takes 10 minutes. This might be slightly irrelevant, but just to put you off course, could you name some of the Tamil dishes that might take two hours to prepare? 
So if we are making dishes from scratch, for example, puri, we have to make the dough and we have to, you know, fry it. And if we are cooking for a family, we have to fry multiple of them. And we also have to make a curry. For example, padapa, which we have, if we are making from scratch, it takes a lot of time to prepare. To conclude, we can't live with Tamil identity from how the clothes affect our daily activities to how the language affects our daily activities. It's much, it's much more efficient to live with the English culture and the English ways. Thank you for listening. That, that, was, that was good. Wow, all of you are really good. Okay, I would like to say that you stating your points at the very start was very unique. No one else had done it. And I really liked that. And also, the way you answered my question, didn't you put, didn't put you off course and you carried on speaking fluently, which is also something that I liked. I think I did catch you looking at your piece of paper a few times, but that, that's fine. That's just something to us. But other than that, really good. So, okay then. So, we've done with all our debaters. They've all put forward their points. We had serious parts. We had everyone was so into their comments. So the people that were for the question had their points seriously on and they were all really putting forward why their identity is important. And the people that are against the question were really fighting back, saying why it couldn't be important. And one part that really hit me hard was when Vaishali said, Padipa takes two hours to prepare. That hit me hard. <laughs> I didn't know that was true, but okay. <laughs> so we're waiting for the result. Yashas? Yeah, Okay, everyone, that was a really tough debate, and both sides were evenly matched. And it, it was a great joy to me to watch this debate, because of how incredible the teams worked together to create amazing speeches. But in the end, as all debates do, it has to end in one winner. So, the winner today has shown confidence, the different perspectives, and stuff that I could relate to personally. So the winner today is the side arguing the motion that it is ethically possible. And the, one of the main reasons for this is because the question in itself has the word practical and all the points that were arguing that it is practical, practically possible were stating that even though no one's doing it, you can do it. Whereas that isn't practical. So the side that's won today is against the motion, saying that it isn't practically possible to have your Tamil identity while living in the UK full of identified people. So there we go. We have our result. Thank you, Yashas, for spending your time with us and listening into our debates. All your comments were so precise and clear and really helped enhance our participants' arguments. Thank you to our Maybelline students for participating today, for putting in all your effort for all your arguments and for participating in the debate today. So that's all we have from Our World, Our Voice, Young Tamils today. So please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe to our Maybelline channel. And if you'd like to participate in these events, then please do contact our Maybelline team as well. Don't forget that if you have any sort of ideas of topics that we could discuss in these shows in the future, please feel free to put them down in the comments below. Finally, wishing you all a very happy Pongan. Signing off until I meet you again is Purvaja Sivakumar. Thank you. Our world, our voice, young Tamils.